in the depth of our despair, our disappointment, not knowing the carnage that is on the inside of the tent. Well, welcome to you, pottery time. Obviously, it's been pottery time. This mug's halfway done. What should we talk about today? We should talk about art shows. It's a fun thing to talk about. Some of you guys might be curious about that if you're watching a, uh, a show about a guy that makes mugs. One of the common ways that potters, artists, craftspeople, tradesmen make their money is by going to craft shows or trade shows, art shows, called by various things. And I actually went to many different kinds of shows through my years as a, as a potter. The ones that typically did the best for us were not the art shows, not the fine art shows. We had some success at an actual straight up trade show, but the best ones were often the like outdoor event market type shows. If you're a potter and you're considering doing some of those and you, you start out going to an art show, like an actual fine art show, I, from my experience, potters tend to not do as well unless you've been going a long time and you got, got some name recognition which I never really had until later on. Nowadays, I only do one show. It's kind of like low-hanging fruit. It's five minutes from the house. It's a great show. I know everybody, like I've been going for years and years. There's a, there's no reason for me not to do that. But for the most part, I have retired from those for the reason that no matter how good they are, shows are always, always going to be rolling the dice you reach a certain i guess you reach a certain level of consistency with some of them but it's still you don't know what you can count on year to year from show to show and if you're doing outdoor shows sometimes you go to those and like you it's raining or it storms and you're not even gonna make your money back if it's like thunderstorm actually i got a story about one of those kind of shows probably the worst show we ever did was a one of the fine art Type shows and the show was billed as a artists only kind of thing for the most part you had painters and you had sculptors and you had like, potters you had uh, there were some clothes but for the most part it was supposed to be and advertised as like a handmade only kind of thing and that was kind of like what this show was known for and it had been recommended to us like it wasn't a uh, it was supposed to be a pretty good show. We rolled up and it, it was an outdoor show. It was kind of like a downtown thing. We were pretty much show noobs at that point, me and my Megs. We had we had done maybe two or three before that. So didn't, didn't really know what to expect. Only knew that, hey, this is, uh, this is supposed to be pretty good. It's outdoor. Uh, but it was the first one I think we'd ever been to where they were calling for inclement weather. We roll up to this show. And our booth neighbor, he's there. But the first thing we notice is the guy is not selling art at all. <laughs> it's not even not even close. He was selling stadium seats that were basically like collegiate football themed stadium seats with fancy cushions and backs on them. I mean, he's a grizzled show veteran for sure. You could tell he had done it before. Our neighbor shall henceforth be referred to as the have a seat guy when we rolled up he could tell i'm sure that we were pretty green we were brand spanking new uh had not done very many shows and well, it's probably pretty pretty obvious because we were we were major noobs at the time we were still kind of figuring out uh getting our legs under us with the shows but it did not give him a license to basically armchair quarterback our entire setup our products our methods our like so we we couldn't really enjoy and experience the process ourselves as soon as we got there he was like you should do it this way you should do it this way hey you guys should get this hey y'all shouldn't use that kind of tent if you're going to do this you need to get the kind of tent that i've got hey have you been bringing where, where are you staying where you know like I, I get that maybe he was trying to be helpful, but he was also condescending <laughs> and, and strained. And I guess that's that's fine. But anyways, we already were not having a good time. Setup was not not super fun. We're set up. 
We got it going. That was the evening before the show. That would be Friday. We zipped our tent up, and we hadn't put out everything yet. We were going to wait till the next day to do that. Stay in the hotel. Hotel was great. Had a good time. I think we went out and got a nice meal. And then the day of the show arrived, and it is already raining. And there are storms predicted for high pretty, I mean, pretty much show open. The show opened at 10. Storms are supposed to be there like 11 or 12. And another disappointing thing that happened with that show is they were predicting, I think this was back before they did the colors on tornado warnings and stuff, but they were predicting hardcore storms. They were like now there would be like a 20% chance of a tornado within 10 miles or whatever. It would have been like an orange threat level three out of five or four out of five. And they're like, yeah, it's going to storm today. And the uh, lady running the show, because I remember her, <laughs> I remember talking to her and the vendors were concerned with the fact that they were going to keep doing the show because we were like, hey, they're saying this is going to get real bad and we don't really want to lose product because we need the product to just go to the next show. If we're not going to be selling it here. If there's a tornado going on, customers are going to common sense out of here and not they're, they're not going to be buying parts in the middle of a tornado. Anyways, well, I don't know what her reasoning was behind it. I guess she didn't want to give people refunds or whatever. I don't, I, I don't know. You'd think it would be a clause, like a no refund, because weather is very common in outdoor shows. Anyways, the show must go on was her attitude. And the show did go on. We rolled up, we opened our tent up. We were there in hindsight. And if I would were to do it now, I would have noped out of there so fast. But I, I, I didn't have the confidence back then. Because a lot of times they say, hey, if you break the rules, you can't come. We're not going to, you, you won't be able to come back. If you close up your booth, and it says it in some of the forms you sign. If you close up your booth five minutes before it's time to leave, or if you leave early, then you're never, you're not going to be invited back. And so I, and I was green. Megs was green. We, we didn't have a confidence. Or like now, if I were doing that show, I'd be like, you crazy lady. I'm going to pack my stuff up and leave. You're going to get someone hurt. Anyways, we stayed. We were there. The rain started coming down real hard. We were getting weather updates. This was, this was before we had smartphones. We were just getting information via, there was like a bookstore owner across the street from us. And he was kind of filling us in. He was like, look, you guys, there's a tornado warning like to the west of us. Uh, it's coming in. You may want to kind of find shelter. And I feel like it was, we, we left. Yeah, that's right. We left a little early earlier than the tornado warning happened because it was just like threatening and we needed to find some place safe. The bookstore guy across the street's like, hey, you guys, you probably should uh, close it up and go find a place. At that point, we had uh, we had a little bit of time. We ended up just walking a couple blocks down. We're like, hey, it's lunchtime. We're going to wait it out in this restaurant. It, it was a safe place. It was, a, it was a safe building, a good place to hunker down. And it was maybe two blocks away from our booth. We had taken the mugs down off of the shelves to the best of our ability. We've repacked a lot of them. We got everything off the top and we hunkered down in an Irish, Irish pub. I remember that it was an Irish pub. I ordered a fish and chips and a Guinness and we rode out the storm. We hung out in an Irish pub. It was not, not an unpleasant experience hanging out with my Megs. Getting a bite to eat. It was a good time. That part was great. 10 out of 10 Wood Irish Pub again. Weathered the storm in the pub. The storm ended. It was like, okay, it is time to go figure out, to go find out what uh, what we've lost. And on the way back to our booth, we, we look over and we see a show boss lady. And she was having a very good time. And she was drunk. <laughs> she was sitting there drinking wine. She was just sitting there drinking. Like, what are you doing? This lady had no business running a show. No business at all. Not to speak ill of her. But I remember getting that feeling. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is like one of my first shows ever. But that lady definitely does not know what she's doing. She should not be running the show. Anyways, we get back to our booth. 
And to our dismay, our complete and utter disappointment, our tent, our show tent, which had only been to one, one other show at that point, has collapsed in on itself. We walk up, standing in front of the tent. I'm here. My Megs is here. Have a seat is over there. He walks up over to us. We're standing in, in the depth of our despair, our disappointment in the collapsing of our tent, not knowing the carnage that is on the inside of the tent. Have a seat sidles up to us and says, well, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> we, both just, we both just looked at it like, so you serious right now? <laughs> oh man, this is so bad. On to how we rallied. Still in the afternoon, still a few hours left to go on show day. And actually, as soon as the storm was over, the sun did pop out. It got really nice and hot and humid after that. Some people did come out. But what we had to do, I actually had a spare tent in the trailer. Thankfully, we had used, we had two different tents. We had one that was a little bit bigger and one that was smaller. A 10 by 10 canopy we did not use. And this is the one that's required by 90 plus percent of all the shows. Thankfully, this show we had a little bit extra space. So we used this big wide canopy that we that we had that in a lot of places you couldn't couldn't use that size tent. The tent was basically mangled like a spider. It had collapsed. It was a scissor tent. So I took the tent that we were going to use out of the trailer and I took the uh, all bent up broken one. I kind of rolled it off of our shelves, like fold that thing up like a weird spider and cram it into the trailer. I spent that evening, that afternoon I crammed it in the trailer and that evening I spent disassembling what I could of that tent, uh, getting it so that we, when we did load out finally, we could take everything, uh, get everything packed back in there in an efficient manner. I ended up bringing that tent home and putting it, putting the dumpster basically. So the tent was gone, it was just like, what had happened on the tent is rain had filled in the canopy and it had finally just built up enough for it to collapse. And with those scissor tent, that is very common, but there's a pretty easy way to avoid it if you're thinking of doing shows. As an aside, you can take clippy clamps and put them, up, see, two, two on each side and make little channels for the water to pour off of them onto the ground. If you don't, if as your canopy gets worn out, it makes little pockets in the top of the tent and it'll fill with water, and if, if it gets too heavy, it'll collapse your tent. I have seen that happen more than once. Pretty pretty common occurrence, actually. But as far as the work that was in the tent, we lost two mugs. Our shelves did get knocked over. There were a few mugs on the ground that we just hadn't packed back up. We should have just taken the time to pack everything up, but when we were on our way out, we were kind of in a hurry. Uh, we lost like two mugs out of 100. It wasn't a big deal, but... That show, as far as like being being good show, it was not a good show. It was one of those quote unquote art shows, and I, that that was my experience all along as doing the shows. The ones, the higher art, the finer art, the show was more than likely the worst I was gonna do. Folks don't typically show up to those to buy, well, to buy pottery. I guess it, it would be my experience. They're showing up to buy like, expensive paintings. And stuff like that but I never had great luck at those personally but this one this was a we lost money on that show we did have a Sunday so the storm came through on Saturday and the show was happening on a Sunday as well but the we didn't make enough money on the Sunday to make up for the loss that one unfortunately was a flop and maybe have a seat he predicted it. You know what he would say? Well, I knew that was going to happen. Let's yeah. be all doom and gloom with the art shows. Art shows are pretty great, and they were real great for us for a number of years. You got to find the right ones, and that's that's half the battle. The outdoor ones, they're always, especially in the south where, where we are, it's rolling the dice. Every time, there's, there's always the specter of weather. The ones that I really like are the convention center shows. Those are the more guaranteed. They're bigger. Although I did one show circuit that was not so good. I've had some that were just like, wow, we we grew to count on those yearly. You don't have to worry about the weather. With that kind of stuff. With those kind of shows. But if you're a potter, I recommend more like outdoor markets. 
like events. So if you if you go to like a uh, like small town events, they'll have usually often have bands and food, like live music, that kind of thing. Those tend to those tended your work may be different, but I had a better time at those. I did have one show where the rain was actually a, a boon. It's like a hybrid indoor, indoor outdoor show. And they provided one gigantic tent. And you could pay a little extra and be inside of the tent that pro this tent provided. But funnily enough, like, you would set up your own tent inside of the big tent. Or you could. Or you could set up, like, your, uh, just the scissor part of your tent. And you could hang lights on it and stuff. That's what I did. I had a lighted shelf set up. And you put, I hung clippy clap clamp lights around, like, the tent structure. But I didn't put the canvas over it. I used the uh, exterior walls of the tent. To cover my stuff in the evening because that was that's another thing you do with those outdoor shows to for security or whatever the weather was a boon to me in this one because they were calling for rain heavy rain but it was not like tornadic type weather and it was kind of like a 50 50 shot on the rain customers were out already they were there on the premises and it spun up this like heavy rainstorm and what that did was it pushed all the customers who were shopping in at the tents outside of the big tent, pushed all those customers into the big tent because there was like plenty of space to like walk around the aisles and stuff. I mean, this tent was huge, the size of a building. During that particular portion of the show, and it rained pretty heavily for probably 30 minutes to an hour, I was, every single booth inside of the big tent had customer, had like lines way all the way out there, uh, out there booths. Uh, selling stuff and I made a crap ton of money during that rainstorm That's that's an example of um, how the weather could work for you Actually, that's the only time that ever happened to me and uh, that was pretty cool Hey you guys, thank you so much for watching and joining me today while I make the mugs on mugs on mugs And I hope you enjoyed my story and my spiel about art shows insights if your adventures if your insights if your experience has varied from mine, I'd be curious to know. Let me know in the comments. Curious to know other people's adventure, art show adventures. I have many, many art show stories. And I say art show, by art show, I mean craft show, market, all of the different categories. I've done them all. We even did a trade show, and that's a whole other thing. I'll probably talk about that at some point in the future. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, if you, need, if you are curious about... Uh, what being a potter is like. If you have questions, ask me in the comments. I'd love to have different things to talk about. And hit the like button, subscribe, and join me live. I'm typically live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday around 9 a.m. You should hit me up. I'll answer some, answer some questions live. I hope you guys have fantastically phenomenal days and hope to catch you in the next video. See you later. Bye.